Hank. To gain access to the lab, you'll need an ID card. You can get one from a guard in an orange jacket stationed in an area where you can hear Quetzal singing. To get the ID card from the soldier, do a body check. You've got to get inside that lab before the AI gets shipped out. Get a move on. You can steal items from soldiers by putting them to sleep or knocking them out and then doing a body check. Get close to the unconscious soldier and press the action button when you see the icon. Or you can sneak up on them from behind and do a hold up. It also works if the soldier's near death. Keep in mind though, if you wait too long, you'll have a dead soldier instead of a dying one. And you can't do a body check if you're holding the Fulton recovery device either. So don't try. Scouts are outfitted with camouflage to help them hide. Some of them look kind of weird, like they've got seaweed growing all over them. Ah, ghillie suits. Not much difference between them and any other scout in terms of combat ability, but it does make them harder to spot. I'm sure it does. You've come across these before? Yeah, the Soviet Union. The first time, it took me a full hour to find the guy and take him out. Cause, do you know what they shine? Shine? Like how? Like, from their heads. Their heads? How about their hair? Do they have a lot of it? What are you talking about? How the hell would I know? How about a parrot? Did anybody hear a parrot squawk? A parrot? Look, Snake, you're talking to the wrong guy. I mean, Cecile's the bird expert. Wait a second, what am I saying? You're not making any sense to begin with. Never mind. It's a long story. I'll figure it out another way. Forget about it. Yeah, I'll do that. Anyway, we've already lost too many good people to these surprise encounters. Make sure you don't end up like one of them. I do not know if I recall such large ruins being there. Well, didn't you say there's a lot we don't know about Costa Rica's ancient civilizations? You talked about some giant stone balls, too. What are those? Oh... The stone spheres of Costa Rica? They are an assortment of giant spheres carved from stone that were discovered in the jungles of Costa Rica about 50 years ago. What's so special about that? What if I told you some of them are nearly perfect spheres and that they were carved out of granite, which is quite a hard substance? Hmm. Could be good for laying a trap. And if they're spherical, they roll easily too. Snake! Snake, be careful when going through areas you've passed through before. The enemy could be waiting to ambush you. And do you know how to identify the soldier with the ID card? Yeah, Cecile told me. He's in a forest with some Quetzals wearing an orange jacket. He'll be from the lab, probably out on patrol. Do a body check to see if he's got the card. Did you see a Quetzal snake? Yep. What do you think? Did it look like a snake? Huh? No, it didn't look like a snake. Oh. Really? Must be different from the Quetzalcoatl then. Quetzalcoatl? A winged snake from the Mayan and Aztec legend. A winged snake. <laughs> Weird, right? I bet it's UMA. Amanda and everybody says Quetzalcoatl is a Quetzal in the form of a god. But there's no way anybody mistake a snake for a bird. I think the legend of Quetzalcoatl came first. Somebody saw it and adopted it as their god before they saw the Quetzal. After that, somebody saw a bird that looked like the image of the god, and so they named it Quetzal. You mean it happened the other way around? Well, if you ask me, the Quetzalcoatl was probably a pterosaur that survived. I mean, it's got wings and, and it's a reptile, so it probably looks kind of like a snake, right? Pterosaurs live on in Africa even today. They're called the Congamato and the Elitziao. So it makes sense that there'd be pterosaurs on the American continent, too, and that they survived until the Mayan and Aztec eras. Wow. Uh -huh. Lucky for us, they're not still around today. Who says they aren't? The dinosaurs supposedly died out 65 million years ago, and the Aztec civilization only rose about 600 years ago. If they managed to survive 65 million years, 
Surely they couldn't be wiped out in 600. Pterosaurs survive today in the African countries of Cameroon and Congo. Each tribe calls them by a different name, like Congomato or Litsiao. There sure are a lot of dinosaurs running around the Congo. Well, a lot of the land hasn't been settled by humans yet. They've survived all this time, just undiscovered by man. But they're finding fossils in America too. This one they found three years ago in Texas had a wingspan of more than 12 meters. If I saw a gigantic pterosaur like that, I'd probably call it a god too. Yup, I'm sure that's what the Quetzalcoatl really is. That was some escape you made from Strangelove's lab. Security inside was not so tight. The door to my room was locked from the outside, of course. But she took off the blindfold at bath time. So she could wash my hair. Huh. <laughs> Pretty luxurious treatment for a prisoner. Hmm, wasn't it? She wouldn't undo the handcuffs, but she washed my body for me instead. And with such gentle care. Why'd you run away? Didn't she say you could go home in a month? If your escape attempt failed, you'd be in greater danger than before. I was supposed to be giving a presentation on the distribution of Costa Rican bird species at a conference. The date was approaching quickly. So, I pretended I had to use the toilet and made my escape. I found an ID card and searched everywhere for my equipment and my tape. But a soldier saw me. It was a miracle I managed to get away. There was no time to find the tape. I do not care about the conference. I am lucky enough to still be in one piece. You bounce back quick. You don't? Not sure. I try not to dwell too much on the past, but... Then don't. There is no point. I'm so glad to be out of there. I never felt... safe, you know? Tell me about it. Well, I think she's interested in women. And I think she took a fancy to me. Oh. Mm. Well, that's, um... Huh. Besides, it is much nicer here. Was it just the two women in the lab? Mm, most of the time, we. Oui. And one of them, you only heard her voice, right? Yes, that is correct. Such a wonderful voice. It sent chills up my spine. What was the other woman like? Ah, don't even think about it. She has not the slightest interest in men. No, it's part of my mission to... <laughs> Only teasing. Let me think. I believe she was in her thirties. Pretty, with a good sense of style, but austere in her tastes. A very unusual woman. And she was doing research on AI. AI? So that is what she was up to. You know, she did say something interesting. That people should not be going into space. That it is too dangerous. Hmm. An automated control system for rockets, then. She said something about wanting to get closer to her dying wish. I think she must have been talking about an old lover. Lover? You mean another woman? Huh. <laughs> My, aren't we curious about the women and other women? You want to hear the terrible things she tried to do to me? That's not what I meant. It's all right. You can be honest. You two seem to get along awfully well together. No, no. Not at all. I think you're hiding something. <sighs> Never mind. Aren't you supposed to be looking for the Quetzal? Here, I'll demonstrate its call for you. I knew it. Let's go over this one more time. First, I need an ID card to get into the lab. That is correct. From the outside, it looks like any other room. But on the inside, it is a state-of-the-art research facility. And your ID card got taken away from you by some guy in an orange jacket. Exactly. I had a Getzel singing nearby. It has not been that long since it happened. Hmm. It could be tricky if he's out on patrol. 
But if he's a stationary sentry, you don't think the Quetzal's moved? Its nest is probably nearby. I do not think it will go away anytime soon. Good. I'll get on looking for that soldier. If you forget what it sounds like, I will do the call for you again. Just give me a call anytime you'd like to hear it. Yeah, I'll do that. Let me get this straight. You were in Costa Rica as a bird watcher? Yes, I was. Not for pleasure, though. I am a researcher, after all. I am studying the distribution of Latin American bird species. With today's compact cassette tape recorders, even a woman like me can carry her recording equipment by herself. But it was a mistake to come alone. Mm. Even so, there sure are a lot of wild birds in Costa Rica. Hmm, aren't there? Over 800 different species, said to be more than 10% of all living bird species on Earth. How many can you name, Mr. Ornithologist? Well, hey, I was just trying not to scare you. You should at least have a basic knowledge of Costa Rica. How about this? I will give you a thorough education, Mr. First Time Ornithologist. Uh, uh okay. Start by telling me about the Quetzal. Cecile, what's that machine you said you used to make those recordings of yours? A cassette, um, something or other. A cassette recorder. Or a cassette densuke, as they say in Japan. Yeah, that. What is that thing, anyway? A portable recording device released last year by a Japanese company, Sony. It uses compact cassettes, making it far lighter than open reel machines. It still weighs five kilograms, but the exercise won't kill me. <laughs> it is user-friendly, too. All the buttons have markings on them, allowing you to operate it without looking at it. <laughs> Can you imagine missing the shot of a lifetime simply because you blinked? Oh, that would be devastating. But where'd they come up with Densuke? Sounds like a Japanese name. Allow me to field that one. Cause? Densuke's a nickname that comes from the name of an old manga character. Oh, uh, was he some recording nerd too? Don't give me that. Recording atmospheric noises is an exhilarating art. There's nothing like capturing the real world in action on tape. It's just like taking pictures with a camera only with a microphone instead of a viewfinder. Oh, uh, sure. Listen to a tape with your eyes closed, and the scene just bursts to life in your mind's eye. Tell him, Cecile. Ah, absolutely. When I listen to the sounds of the birds in my apartment, it is like I am back in the forest, where I recorded them. See? She's a Parisian. She knows what's chic. If you say so. And what do you like to record, Monsieur Miller? Me? Steam locomotives, no question. The roar of the engine, the throaty steam whistle. More animal than machine. Ah, uh, don't get me started. Steam locomotives are a dying breed in Japan. I wouldn't mind going back for a bit and making some new tapes while I still can. Ah! Oh, you are less civilized than I thought. L less civilized? I detest those beasts. The noise frightens off all the birds, then there is the smoke. I much prefer the peace and quiet of the forest. Uh, Cecile, wait. That... that came out wrong. I... <laughs> sure it did.
to be a Quetzal singing close to where your target is located. Keep your ears open. Fulton recovery subject confirmed on board helicopter. If you forget what a Quetzal sounds like, give Cecile a call on the radio. She'll remind you.
Once you know which soldier has the ID card, do a body check. To do a body check, first knock the soldier out, or put him to sleep, or hold him up. That works too. You are doing great, Snake! Peace! Fulton recovery to helicopter is complete. Fulton recovery subject confirmed on board helicopter. It is not easy, but I have faith in you. is in your hands.
Sometimes what they get the thumbs like. ID card you found to get into the lab.
Bolton recovery helicopter is complete. That much. No, it is not easy, but I have faith in you. that noise.
tree. <gasps> What's that noise? <laughs> Whoa. Excellent. It's open. Yes, waiting without joy or pleasure. Waiting for the one I despise. Don't move! Don't move? You men and your guns. You all say the same thing. I suppose you're here to destroy my research. Yes, I know. Just as I know what you did ten years ago. Go on. Kill me like you killed her. Kill me like you killed the boss. Kill me! What exactly do you... Come on, Snake. Or should I say Big Boss? That filthy title given you as reward for murder. Do you still wear it with pride? You chose a shadowy country over the mentor who made you what you are. You brought despair to good soldiers everywhere. You use the pretext of a mission to kill a true hero! Is that what you call loyalty? Answer me! The boss. Well, what do you have to say for yourself? She betrayed America. She stole a Davy Crockett and then defected to the other side. She used an American nuclear weapon to attack Soviet territory. The only way for Washington to prove its innocence to Moscow was to eliminate the traitor themselves. The boss's death was the only thing that could have prevented all-out nuclear war. Is that what you call the truth? It's the truth as it was told to me. So the truth is that you sullied the reputation of your mentor, the woman you love most in this world, before you buried her? It was my mission. Huh. So that's the conclusion you came to in order to live with yourself. What's the boss to you? I'm the one she abandoned when she left this world. I won't rest until I get answers from the woman I loved. You and I are the same. We are the walking dead. <sighs> Would you like to meet her? The boss is gone. Not so fast. You'd like to meet her, wouldn't you? 
I can arrange it. You took her life. I gave it back. You what? Care for a sniff? It's only snuff. You're a cigar man, aren't you? Well, there's no smoking in there, so if you want to meet her, you'd best partake now. <coughs> Follow me. This is my baby, my morpho butterfly. It's neither pupa nor cocoon, but an Amar girl. A complete individual, in the fullest sense of the word. Is someone there? Uh, boss. We have a visitor. I'll introduce him. Don't try anything foolish. As long as we're in here, I can induce you to carbon at the press of a button. Who are you? A man. A warfighter. Boss. Is that you? I call it the mammal part. Mammal part? For my participation on the project, I demanded access to all information on the boss. Everything the CIA had. Her personal history, military records, physiological data, correspondence, the files for every operation she took part in, every decision she ever made at every possible turn, what she took and what was taken from her, her pain and her pleasure, her joy and sorrow, her life and death, and yes, even you. Why, why would you do that? Coldman sought an MAD-based AI that would deliver an effective retaliatory strike against the most appropriate target in response to a nuclear attack from a hypothetical adversary. An unmanned device to act as a deterrent capable of making the decisions and taking the actions that human beings cannot. I therefore concluded he required a cool calculating machine Program to inflict swift, sure, and utter annihilation upon the enemy. No retaliation. But he took it upon himself to come up with a different answer. He said he needed the thought patterns of the very finest rational mind. One that thought on a global scale, took both past and future into consideration, and reached the best decision, no matter how painful. And that's why you asked for everything they had on the boss. It was the logical thing to do. I knew of only one person who could be entrusted with the fate of the entire human race. What's your real goal here? To clear her name. Why was a legendary hero forced to betray her country? Why was she targeted for assassination by you, her most beloved disciple? I have no use for fabrications. I want the truth. The boss's last will. You must be dying to know yourself. No. No. She abandoned her country. Abandoned us all. Really? You think you understand her feelings? You're trying to recreate the boss's last will. Is that it? Why don't you ask her yourself, Jack? Snake, extinguish that noble soul once again, if you can. Go 
I taught you all I could. The rest you needed to learn on your own. Techniques, sure. But what about how to think like a soldier? I taught you all I could. The rest you needed to learn on your own. Techniques, sure. But what about how to think like a soldier? There's a saying in the Orient, loyalty to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. As long as we have loyalty to the end, there's no point in believing in anything, even in those we love. Soldiers supposed to think. The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission. <laughs> as long as we have loyalty to the end, there's no point in believing in anything, even in those we love. That is the way a soldier is supposed to think. The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission. <laughs> I'm defecting to the Soviet Union. Jack, you can't come with us.